Christ. On this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members, dispersed throughout the world, to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly host in choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with the glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. All the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Let us pray. O oh God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh 
to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, 
that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried by him, buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever told stories around a campfire? When I was a child and youth, I attended a Presbyterian summer camp in the mountains of Virginia. And one of my favorite experiences was listening to stories around the campfire. And the best part was, the more summers I spent there, the better I knew the camp stories. By my final summer there, I knew just about all of them. The great vigil of Easter is a service about remembering. It is, in a sense, the church telling our shared stories in darkness around a campfire, around the paschal candle, in this case, lit from the new fire. In the most ancient form of the Easter vigil, there were 12 scripture readings. We've trimmed it back a bit in our own day, but the pattern is the same. We remember. We remember God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past. We remember God saving the Israelites from the Egyptians at the Red Sea. We remember God's promises of old through the prophets to covenant with God's people and give us a new heart and a new spirit. And we remember, above all, this holy night, God saving us from sin and death through the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are baptized into Christ's death so that we may be raised with him in newness of life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in strange times, to say the least. Gather together virtually in the midst of this frightening pandemic. How I wish I could be with you in person instead of speaking to you through this screen. These are strange times indeed surreal times. But as Christians, one word I urge us to use sparingly is unprecedented. Why? Because while this pandemic is certainly unprecedented in our lifetimes, unprecedented even in some respects in our American history, as Christians, we take a longer view We remember tonight that whenever things have seemed the darkest for God's people, God has shown up in unexpected ways. When all the might of the Egyptian army was closing in on the Israelites, God saved them with mighty waters. And when the faithful women went to the tomb that first Easter, in the receding dark of early dawn, weighed down with despair, they heard the most astonishing news. He is not here, but has risen. Remember, the dazzling angels tell them, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And when they hear these words, they do remember, and they go and remind others to remember too. This pandemic may seem unprecedented, but times of great trial are not for the people of God. And God has always been there down the millennia, mysteriously, not to prevent suffering, but to be present in the midst of it, and often to transform it. Historically, 
Christians have been at our best in the most difficult times. Christians have been the ones in crises to care for the vulnerable, to give of themselves for others. Indeed, the early Christian faith grew most dramatically during times of plague in the Roman Empire. Because people wanted to know what inspired these followers of Jesus to act with such great love. What inspired them was faith in Jesus, grounded in the memory of God's faithfulness since the beginning of time. As the great hymn says, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Let us remember tonight how God has been with us in ages past, never forsaking us and never abandoning us. For that remembrance comforts us with the sure and certain hope that God will surely be with us now in this time of trial and forevermore. God has already been with us these last few weeks as the church has been reinventing ourselves in this time of physical distancing. We have had to die to some old ways to be raised in new ones. We're all using much more technology than we could have imagined even a month ago. But we are also remembering and recovering faith practices that we'd perhaps forgotten or neglected. We're relearning how to pray the daily office of morning and evening prayer, one of the great gifts of our Anglican tradition. We're taking our old Bibles off the shelf. We're remembering how to do phone trees to check on each other, remembering how to cook and bake, sit down to eat as families, or leave food on our neighbor's doorstep. God is already at work in this crisis, as God always is, if we have eyes to see. My new friends, the beloved of God in Oklahoma, may God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead enliven us with grace to bring God's light and life to all those whom we encounter. And may our memories of his saving power in ages past inspire us to selfless love of God and our neighbor in this trying time. This is our story, and God is telling the next part through us. Amen.
With the Father and the Son, he is worshiping the Lord God. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism of the goodness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Hallelujah.